I'm here with this FL Sun T1 Pro. This is a Delta printer. Um, they claim high speeds with it, ultra high speed 3D printing leader, as it says in the box. Really excited to check this out. I've not used a printer like this before. I'm a little intimidated by this thing's size. I think it's like three feet tall or something. So let me get this out of the box and get it set up. We'll talk about it a little and we'll see how quickly I can print on this. Now it is pretty well packaged, it looks like. This is proper styrofoam. I just stood it up on the end here and then kind of carefully lowered it onto its side. Okay, so maybe don't stand it up the way I did. Um, there was just one little thin sheet of styrofoam holding these things in. So I'm gonna lay this back down very carefully. So look for the side here with the cutout. And then I would, um, I believe that was on the top of the box in my case. So then you can just cut the bag, lift that out, and then you can access everything. And I just touch the build plates and I gotta wash it. Great. Good job, Ryan. But yeah, let me get all this stuff out and try not to get styrofoam everywhere. Um, some of these manufacturers use that foam. Some use the styrofoam. Um, I actually prefer the foam instead of the styrofoam because you can like use it for their projects. Styrofoam, not so much. But yeah, let me get this out. I'm putting this together here. I want to show you something. I thought that these were just like decorative, but no, these actually turned down. Let me show you over here. Uh, <laughs> makes a whole lot more sense. So you just, yeah, there you go. Then you're good. So you have a screw there and a screw there on each side. Um, I will say, this is definitely taking me a lot longer to put together than I thought it would. Um, you know, you attach the three pillars to the two bottom pieces. You have to do all of this, the arm things and this, and you're plugging in all these cables. This is the camera cable. Um, the camera rides up and down the rail, I believe, so that it's always looking down like this. So that cable is kind of, you know, doing its thing or whatever. Um, you put this little thing here, you gotta take this off and take this piece off and then you run cable through there and then I've still got a couple things left and then hopefully we can actually get around to printing. It's definitely been a lot more than I'm used to but I know it's a lot quicker than a lot of printers too. Another thing real quick when you're putting the glass door on you're definitely going to want a helper. Um, I did do it by myself but I would not recommend it. It was kind of sketchy. I was like holding it with my leg down here and then I was trying to do the first screw. Once you get two screws in, it's fine. But um, just, yeah, maybe for the door, have a helper handy. Also, I'm trying to do the, the door handle here. So you line it up and then put the screws through. Um, that plastic wasn't actually tapped and it's, you know, just like a flimsy plastic. So I'm working the screws in before I try to line them up because I just could not get the screw to go in that way. Even holding it like this, it was pretty difficult. So yeah, you probably want to do that first to save some frustration. All right, so here we go. It's doing its calibration and bed leveling for the first time. Um, obviously this isn't going to be its permanent home. I just want to do a benchy out here and then I'll move it to where it's actually going to be used. So then I'll have to redo the calibration and stuff in there. But I'm curious to see how it performs on the folding table. I've let it finish the calibration. I'm trying to feed this uh, PLA in. And yeah, fingers crossed. We're gonna try to print a Benchy and then I'll move this to its uh, more permanent location and I'll print as much as I can. So I'm here doing a 27 minute Benchy now. I've moved it to the table I wanted. I did another 10 minute Benchy, it came out about the same. So I slowed it down some. As you can tell, this thing's pretty loud. I mean, with the door shut, it helps, but the span up here definitely makes a lot of noise when it's at 100%. It's definitely a printer I would probably keep in a separate space than where I worked. It's going to be a little bit loud here while I'm working, but, you know, I want to babysit it, keep an eye on it, just kind of check it out. So I did want to point out here that at speed, it actually starts to knock some of the stuff off. This is one of the included files. Oh, it's kind of trash in that. It'll be interesting to see if this actually finishes. I've not had this issue when I'm doing stuff smaller, but at speed, it's definitely happening. Okay, so I thought we would check out some prints from this printer while I also kind of talk about it. Um, 
Overall, I'm, I'm really happy with this thing. You can see here that this came out pretty well. I used a two-tone filament. I never know what to do with it, but I'm real happy with how it turned out here, especially like the stones. I don't know how you can see those, but yeah, there we go. But this thing printed just amazing and wonderfully. It took four hours and 58 minutes to turn this out. So along those lines, I was like, what else could we print that's kind of fantasy-ish? Some of you uh, Lord of the Rings fans might recognize this fellow. That printed out. That was supposed to take about nine hours. It took three hours. It had been nine hours on, you know, my bamboo or whatever, and about three hours there on this FL Sun, which I was really impressed about. Same thing here. He's much harder to see because I printed him in black. Uh, but you kind of get the idea. This was the first one I did. I did that, and then I did this. And then I came back with Saruman here and really, really freaking happy here. Like the detail that came out is completely acceptable, especially if you're going to paint this. You know, you do get a little bit of the lines up there on his scalp, but it's because it's round and it's just going to happen. You could sand that just a little and put a little bit of filler on there and then paint that up. It'd look really great. This is a model that comes on it. Again, I did it in black. I was just trying to use up some high-speed PLA in it, and the only high-speed PLA I had was black, so we did some things with that to see if it did a better quality, and honestly, just regular PLA came out perfectly fine. Um, the high-speed PLA might have been a little bit better, but negligibly, so feel free to use regular PLA if you want. But let's go ahead and talk about the printer a little. So, you know, this was the FL Sun T1 Pro. It's pretty fast. Um, the retail price is like $5.99, I think, but I think I've seen it down to $5.49. You know, sales come and go, so don't hold me to those prices, but, you know, reasonable amount. Uh, pretty great for hobbyists and stuff. If you needed to rapidly prototype stuff, um, yeah, especially on larger volume prints, I would use this for that. It can do up to 1,000 millimeters a second. I did see that on acceleration on these two guys. I didn't really watch that one too much because I was working. And that one, you know, took, what, like five hours or whatever. Uh, he's a chunky boy. There's several hundred grams there. Um, I believe this is one of the included models, too. It's called Paladin. Mm, kind of looks more like a, a dwarf to me, other than the bull cut. But, you know, whatever. The build volume, I believe, is 260 by 330 millimeters. Kind of weird, but that's because it's got this circle shape. So it does let you get um, some bigger stuff than you would on something uh, more traditional. Now, the noise. It does clock in at about 55 decibels, which is, you know, not quiet, but it's also generally considered safe. At no point did my watch notify me that I was in an unsafe environment. It does when I do some other things. So, you know, take that for what it is, but I, I felt comfortable in the room. It wasn't too loud. It was just kind of annoyingly loud. Uh, noise canceling headphones and I could listen to stuff just fine. It has a super, super duper uh, user friendly interface. Uh, I bleep blooped it and didn't even look at the manual and had it up and running pretty fast. Here is a cat, another included model that I did in a blue. Um, pretty cool. So the versatility, it'll take several different filament options. It's got four, I think, already pre-programmed in. So you just, you know, it goes to a default temperature and for the plate and for everything else. The pros, you get like ridiculous speed. For example, here's a 10 minute Benchy, and we'll, we'll circle back to this in a second. You do get kind of a large print volume. Um, you, you know, you don't have uniform dimensions, but you do get large there. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit bigger than some of my other printers. So let's talk about the cons. If you're looking for an entry level printer, uh, this one's a little more on the expensive side. It's twice as much as some entry level printers, but this is a Delta printer. It's not a Core XY, it's not a bed slinger. It's different technology, so yeah, you, you get the faster speeds. So while we're talking about the faster speeds here, let me clear some of these guys out of the way. There's a little less clutter. All right, so I did two Benchies. Uh, it comes with a Benchy that's set to print in about 10 minutes. And we'll take a look at that. It was crazy seeing this print fast, but right away you can see some of the defects that you get at that kind of speed. Um, there's some warping on the hull there. Uh, on the back, you do get a little bit of weird stringing. and But overall, like, 
really impressive for a 10 minute benchy. There's a little bit of stringing in the cabin. You can see there a little spider webbing. Uh, but yeah, you got a little bit of shifting in the hall line there and some wonky stuff up here. It's kind of hard to see. There you go. But super impressed for that 10 minute benchy. So then I just did like a 23 minute benchy and it came out virtually flawless. Um, as good, if not better than every printer I've tried. Definitely better than some, but as good as, as pretty much everything at this uh, speed, 23-ish minutes. Uh, everything is nice and smooth. Very, very happy with that. But like extremely happy with that 10 minute. If you just needed to rapidly prototype something and you were going to do it again later, you just needed to kind of see if it roughly fit or worked, like go for the speed, man. Um, this is almost entirely cosmetic. There's nothing, nothing here that I would be like, oh yeah, for a prototype, that's, I, that's not usable, like just cosmetic. So go full speed. I did do a all in one test here, the little benchy, everything came out wonderful. Uh, you can see there, we did go 10 through 80 degrees on the angles and we really didn't start running into trouble until about 60 degrees. It's kind of hard to get this on the screen. There we go. So you see, you do start getting some issues there at 60 and then into 70 and then up here at 80, it gets the worst. But yeah, like really good on those overhangs. Um, I was extremely satisfied with everything on this print. I'm gonna start using this model in all of my tests. And I'm gonna do it for all my other printers probably because it'd be nice to compare these. And this did take 34 minutes. I wrote that there on the bottom. So now I need to write this printer on there and then I'm gonna start a little library of these, I think. I was originally just gonna start a Benchy library, but I think this is a more useful test. Uh, but yeah. And then I did make a little fidget because I really like fidgets. So very satisfying if I could operate this. You know, it printed this in no time. I think this took like three, four minutes. It just hammered it out. And there's, you cannot tell that was fast printed. So pretty happy with that. And then finally, I started to print this thing um, that the printer had. And I, it, enough of it printed that I was just like, okay, cool. And I went ahead and stopped it. So that's why it kind of terminates prematurely. Um, and I just wanted to move on to something else. But again, I used that multicolor filament there. And really happy with how it turned out, especially inside, because you get, you know, everything. Uh, and then I just started using this to like throw little pieces of trash and stuff in. So that's what you hear rattling around. Um, more on that subject of rattle, I will say one thing. When this was doing the fill on the base, it was going ridiculously fast. And it did start to knock little pieces of the fill material off. I don't know if you can hear that on camera. But... There are a couple little pieces that broke off. Not a huge deal. You could always just dial that down, you know, 5%, 10%. I'm sure it would have been fine. Um, some of my much more expensive printers do the exact same thing at much slower speeds. So, you know, whatever. But yeah, I just, I'm so happy with all of that. I'm going to adjust the camera here a little. Such a great outcome. I did not know what to expect from a Delta printer. Um, completely alien to me. I think they look alien when they're operating, but I am thoroughly happy. Don't mind the $40 up there in the corner. Uh, someone shoveled our driveway for us when we got 12 inches of snow, and I'm just waiting for her to come back. She forgot to get paid. A little 4-H uh, girl in the neighborhood. So that's sitting down here in case she knocks. We don't have to go scrambling for the cash. I really like this printer. It's kind of kind of creeps me out because <laughs> it looks like some weird alien contraption, but it works. It works way better than I thought it would. I'll see you guys in the next video.